Suppose we have two circuits which are in close proximity to each other but physically separated. Now suppose we pass an alternating current through circuit one. This of course generates a magnetic field and by Faraday's law we get an induced voltage on circuit two here. So here I've, I've used the symbol for electromotive force, but that's the same as voltage. Now Faraday's law tells us that the magnitude of this voltage will be proportionate to the rate of change of the total magnetic flux phi with respect to time. And phi is the total magnetic flux linking circuit two from circuit one. So if you integrate the magnetic field within this loop, you will get the total magnetic flux, phi. Now, you also have the n. n is the number of loops. So if you had another loop here, you would effectively double the amount of magnetic flux passing through that circuit. So phi is our measure of total magnetic flux. Um, and the unit for phi is called the Weber, okay? And the Weber has an interesting definition because it's defined as the change in magnetic flux that will be required in one second to get one volt. Okay, so it's got an interesting uh, definition. So what we can say from this is the higher the flux, the more voltage we get induced. So intuitively, we can see from this that the more magnetic field linking this second circuit from the first circuit, the higher the induced voltage will be on the second circuit. And this really is where the concept of uh, mutual inductance comes in because uh, mutual inductance gives us a way to measure how much magnetic flux is coupled from the, um, the first circuit to the second circuit, okay? So if we define mutual inductance as M, it's defined in terms of Weber's per amp. So it's the total magnetic flux per unit current. So if you have a high mutual inductance, that means you have relatively um, a large amount of magnetic flux coupled to circuit two from circuit one. And if you have a low mutual inductance, you get less magnetic flux coupled, so less Weber's per unit current. Uh, so you can see that this concept of uh, mutual inductance gives us a way to measure uh, how closely coupled these two cir uh, circuits are magnetically. So yeah, definition of mutual inductance is Weber's per amp. And it's very closely related to the geometry of the situation because if the two circuits are close together, then you can see that more of the magnetic flux from the first circuit will couple into the second circuit. And if they're further away, less of that magnetic flux will couple into the second circuit. If the orientation of the second circuit um, has less of an open face compared to where the field is coming from, then you get less uh, magnetic flux coupled into the second circuit. So this concept of mutual inductance is very closely related to the geometry of the situation. And there are analytical formulas that you can uh, derive and use to actually calculate what the mutual inductance is for different, um, different arrangements and different uh, circuit um, arrangements. And of course, another way that you can increase the mutual inductance between two circuits is to link them with a magnetic core and this acts to concentrate the field so more of the magnetic field produced from the first circuit links to the secondary and less of it sort of misses the target and if you know if the field goes outside the loop then it doesn't contribute to the induced voltage so if you put a magnetic core you know connecting the, these two circuits then that acts to concentrate the field and the vast majority or more of the field from the first one links to the second one. Um, if you take this to the extreme, you have a circuit with a very high mutual inductance, then you get, you know, you approach something that looks like a transformer, where almost all of the energy from the first circuit links to the second circuit with very little loss. And we also have something called self-inductance, where the same uh, phenomenon I just discussed happens except the circuit does it to itself. So the circuit generates a magnetic field and that magnetic field links back into itself. Faraday's law is still in force. 
and you have an induced voltage within the same circuit. So self-inductance, it's got a very similar definition to mutual inductance. It's nothing more than uh, how many Webers of flux you have per unit current in that same circuit. So for something like an inductor, the voltage induced is across the inductor and it kind of looks like a voltage drop, but this is called self-inductance. Same concept as mutual inductance, except it's doing it to itself. So we've talked about the two main types of inductance. We've got mutual inductance and we've got self-inductance. But why are they important? Well, let's look at the case of mutual inductance. And we can say that any two conductors, um, in fact, any two conductors in the universe um, have a mutual inductance. Of course, if they're very far away, it's gonna be almost negligible. Uh, but in the more realistic situation, let's say we have uh, an overhead power line and that passes relatively close to a fence in someone's garden. Mutual inductance would tell us what voltage we would have induced on the fence for a given current and a given rate of change of current in the overhead line. So if there's a lightning strike, we have a very high current and we also have a very fast rate of change. You know, if we know what the mutual inductance is between those two uh, conductors, then we can work out exactly uh, or approximately what voltage we would get in the fence and whether it's safe. Now, in the case of self-inductance, you know, we can look, you know, it's really important whether we're designing electronics, whether we're designing power systems, that, that self-inductance will give us a voltage drop and that voltage drop will increase as the frequency of the current increases, okay? And you can, you can design conductors with very high inductance. I mean, the easiest way to do it is just to have lots of loops and have something that looks like a solenoid. And in fact, that's why the symbol for an inductor is something that looks like lots of loops. But yeah, but you know, self-inductance self is present in any conductor, even a straight line. If you had a conductor which was just a, a straight conductor, that itself would have some self-inductance. And if you were to model that circuit properly, you would have to account for that self-inductance and represent it as an inductor in the equivalent circuit. Um, and you would get a voltage drop. It would contribute to a power factor and have other effects. So I hope that explains to you what mutual inductance is, what self-inductance is, and why it's important that we understand what these are. So thank you for listening.